Well, hi again, everybody. Welcome to my latest video. Well, in this video, I am going to get to do something I've been wanting to do for a long time, and that's align the colors properly on my new 4K monitors. As I may have mentioned, and I think I did, on a couple of my other videos, I have two of those LG 4K monitors that I made a separate video on. They're sitting side by side here in front of me. I also have a third one up above, but that's, uh, that's not an LG one. But in any case, all three of them, the colors don't align right. And I've played for quite some time with the various settings in terms of the brightness, contrast, color. And although I got it pretty close in a couple of cases, it's not perfect. So what I did is I went ahead and got myself this Data Color Spider X Pro. And what this will allow me to do, a full alignment of the colors on all my monitors, not just these three, but basically every monitor that I have access to, including laptops and everything else. There is some software I have to install that goes onto the PC because what it's going to do and how it works is set the brightness to a certain level. They give you an indicator on the screen. And then once it's done the alignment, it actually creates a color alignment profile that gets placed into Windows itself so that Windows, when Windows comes up, it'll actually load that profile and it'll set the colors on the monitor for you. So I'll go ahead and open up the box here and then I'll install the software and show you a little bit out of the manual. It's pretty simple to use actually. And we'll take it from there and we'll see what the end result is. Okay, so here it goes. Let me uh, get something to open up this box with. Get my handy dandy knife here. It's got two tapes. Okay, what do we got? Oh, it shows you where to go to download your software. Somewhere in here, there's supposed to be a card with like a uh, license for the software. Plastic holder. Oh yeah, it's a, a sticker at the bottom of the box. So I won't put that on camera. It's actually showing the spider serial number, I believe. And there's not that much to it. Uh, the manual is not here. I'll show it online in a couple of minutes. It just has a simple little USB connector to it. There's the device and it opens up in the middle here, I believe. Yeah, and I think this pulls out. If you look carefully at this, this pulls out so you can get more and more wire to it. Does this come with it? No, it doesn't, but it's okay. It looks like it stops itself because there's a lot of friction built into this. Okay, let me get the manual online here and show you some of that, and then we'll actually try it out. Okay, the first thing that we want to do is go to the website to get the manual. Now, it was actually shown on the little card that came inside the box. As you recall, I've got that typed in here. Let's go there. And over here is where you would download the manual. They also give you some quick install instructions here. But here's where you would go to load the actual Spider X. Now be careful, there's two different models. There's the Spider X Pro and there's the Spider X Elite. The Elite is a more expensive unit with a few more features. If you're professional into editing pictures, then you probably want to use the Spider X Elite. And you'll pay about twice as much for that. But this is how you would uh, get the software for that. The manual, I believe, is the same though. Once you download the manual, you'll find out that it looks the same. Let me show you the manual, which I've already downloaded and I have on the screen. Picture of it, of course, table of contents. And as you'll notice, there's two separate sections for it. There's the Spider X Pro, which is what I got. If you have the Spider X Elite, it's the next one after that. You also have a separate section for recalibrating, as will be, you know, you'll find out after you've calibrated it the first time. And then some other sections that are interesting, like frequently asked questions. Okay, so here's the general introduction of it. They're showing you on the screen here how it works. We're going to put it into a little box once the software is installed and just follow the on-screen instructions. Here's where they show you the difference between the Spider X Pro and the Spider X Elite. And you see the different features you pick up with the Spider X Elite. This shows you how to install it. This is where that serial number comes in that I showed you. I didn't show you my serial number, but I showed you the card that it came on. Actually, it was a, a little sticky at the bottom of the box that the spider came in. So we're going to do this now, and then we'll follow the instructions, and we'll go ahead and get this thing installed. So I'm going to 
download the software after I follow these instructions. Okay, this is the directory that I've used to store both the Spider Pro software and the manual, which I just finished showing you. Let me now run the setup program and see how that goes. I did see an instruction not to plug it in until it tells me to do so. I'm going to do it in English, starting the setup. By the way, I am logged in as the administrator at this point, just to avoid any problems. You never can tell when you're installing some new software. I'm not doing anything else, I'm not going to the internet or anything. Let's move on to the next step here. It says uh, the program will install it. It's strongly recommended that you exit Windows programs before running. Please do not plug it in, as I said before, until it tells us to. Let it pick the default directories. Fine. Okay, now ready to go and installing. Not sure what that all that initial setup was that it was doing. It must have been scanning the system for something. Okay, moving along. Setup is finished. Copy and please plug it in. USB 3.0 port I have here in the front. It now sees the data cutter utility is available. How do I click on that? I gotta click on this little icon here, Launch Spider X Pro. So I had to actually pick an icon on the taskbar to start this thing. Let me show you what I mean. There's an icon down over here, and I had to click on this, and one of the choices was to launch the Spider X Pro. So that's what I did. Okay, let's perform the calibration. It's okay if you show that for now. Please make sure your spider sensor is plugged in to the USB port. Okay, next. Enter your serial number. Type in the serial number here. I'll probably block this out on the video itself. Okay, now we hit next. Activate using the internet. Okay, type in all my information. Do I want to receive free updates and exclusive offers? No, I don't. Okay, it's doing something, communicating. It has now given me a code. So I'm probably going to save this now. Looks like it gives you the option to print it out as well. I took a screen capture of that and I'm gonna save it on my, uh, my NAS server so that I don't lose it. I believe I read in the instructions it will email it to me as well. So with that, let's do a finish. Uh, let it check for updates, why not? Are you willing to share information? No, I don't wanna share that. Good, go okay to this. Okay, let's do next. This right, yeah, it's a generic monitor one uncalibrated, which is where we're at. Next, desktop, next. Standard monitor types, LG. Okay, this one is an LG 27UL500-W. Next, okay, it wants me to set the adjustment. Now I think I do have a Kelvin setting on this. Let me go into the settings and find out. If I click on the settings, Yep, I do have a Kelvin adjustment. So which control indicators? It offers both, so I'm gonna click on that. Next, you get your choice of wide LED, standard LED, general. If you read the printing, it obviously makes sense that we are using the wide LED as it defaulted to. So that's what we're going to stick to, and then we'll be able to adjust it from there. To use new room lighting feature, click on the change settings button, set the room light pop-up room light. The white point is set, says this set to 6500, brightness at 120. On your display, adjust the desired white point. Place the spider on the desk as shown. There's a spider right here, so I'm gonna place it down as they indicated down on the desk. Next, recommended settings is 6500 according to this. So let me um, go back into the settings. They want 6500 right there. That's what I've set it to. Let's go next. Please stay at your computer after you click the next button. On this screen, the application will take a few measurements and then wait. After the brightness is dialed in, the application will continue with the calibration. Okay, so let me get this thing set up so that it goes on the screen that way and goes into that little box as they indicated. Gonna have to stretch it open a little bit. A little bit more. It's not uh, locking in place, is it here? I may have to hold it, I guess. I'm not sure. Do it like that. Okay, next.
What does it say here? It says, click the update button to measure the screen brightness. Look at the target and current values. Adjust the brightness accordingly. Target is current. It's a little bit off. I got to get this in. It's way too bright according to this. So let me go in and adjust the brightness. Settings, brightness. I guess I okay to that. Let me update it. Now it's too low. See how this went way over here? I got to get it into the green. It's going to be difficult, it looks like, to get that in there exactly right. I have to do trial and error here. Let me go into the settings again. Brightness. We do an update. We're in there. 199, it looks like, and I want 200. Can I get it any closer? 201. So I can't seem to get it uh, exactly at 200. Try it again. Now it's either 199 or 201. I'll go for 201. Good. Okay, so now I hit continue. A lot of measuring there. Okay, so now it says finish. Okay, I guess I can take this off now. I'll put it off to the side here. And what's it saying now? It has hived the name. I'm going to save it. Congratulations, it's all done. It says I have good adjusted color now. Okay, let's, uh, let's hope for the best. And uh, I think that's good enough for now. Let me close it to the next. It gets to show you what it was before and after. So if we click on one of these pictures here, so if I click on one of these pictures and see the before and the after. Switch. That's the uncalibrated view. And that's the calibrated view. It looks brighter, doesn't it? So I think that does work. Okay, that's a pretty picture. Let me go to next. It's showing me how close it fits in here. So this is showing how close we are between the two triangles. Okay, 97% of sRGB. So it's very accurate in terms of that. And I guess I can quit at this point. All done. Okay, I want to do my second monitor, my second 4K monitor to the right. So I've already gone ahead and answered all the questions up to this point. It's asking me to place my Spider Pro in the same box that we had before. Okay, and I want to do next. And it wants this thing moved down again. Right now it's at 214.5 and it wants it to within 200. So let me go into the settings on this one. Try to bring it down a little bit. I'm way down at this point. So let me go back up again. A little bit more. It's at 203. Let me see if I can come down a little bit. It's at 201, which is the same as the other one. So at that point, I'm going to say next, I believe. Continue. Unfortunately, this monitor doesn't have the Kelvin adjusted to it. I'm not sure why, the exact same model. I did send an email to LG, but they didn't give me a solution to that. Okay, it says it's complete. Let's finish it. You know, it looks pretty close. Let me back this up a little bit and you'll see what I mean. Those are the two monitors as you see them on the screen right now. You know, the colors look pretty close at this point, to be honest with you. They're a little dark for my suiting, so I may still tweak them up a little bit, the same amount on the brightness. But I do like it a little bit brighter, but for now I'll leave it that way. I still have to go and do the third one though, which I have a ViewSonic one up here, but I'll do that later. So with that, let me go back into here. It has a dash two already, so it knows it's a second monitor. So I'll save it. Congratulations. Next, let's see what this one looks like. So if I click on this picture with all the colors in it, this is the calibrated view. That's the uncalibrated view. Washed out colors, it looks like to me. And then that's nice, vibrant colors. Anyway, anyway, that's the way I see it. So that's good. I think that's good for now. Well, here are three still pictures of the final result. In the first one, I show my bottom left monitor. The second one is the bottom right monitor. And the third one is the top center monitor. That's a 2K monitor. Then finally, I have a picture showing all three monitors together with the same graphics that the tool produced. So what'd you think of that? I think this thing works very well. 
and I'm glad that I actually got it and was able to show it to everybody here in this video. Hopefully you got something out of it as well, and if you have monitors that you want to go ahead and do the alignment on, this will do it. So hopefully you got something out of this video, and if you did, please consider subscribing to my channel. It doesn't cost anything. It takes just a couple of minutes. You're probably already logged on to YouTube anyway for putting comments or you know, putting thumbs up or thumbs down on videos. And if that's the case, all you have to do is click the subscription button. I'm not asking you to click the bell. I don't want you to be bothered with the notifications. What I need you to do, though, is to click the little subscription button, and that'll help this channel grow. I would really appreciate it. Well, thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you again on my next video. Take care.